right, welcome everybody to our first Zoom class for Indigo River Tiny Home University. Um, I'm Christina. I'm Peter. We're and married. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Um, and we are, we're partners in life and in business too. So, um, we're going to be sharing what we've learned in the past four years, uh, building tiny houses and in the past 16 years in the construction business and as small business owners, we've, we've had several small businesses over the years and, um, so we're bringing all of our experience and uh, want to share it with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull up the slides. Yeah. And we will get into it. Let's see. I don't know if that's the best way to do it or not. Let's see here. Can y'all see? I'm going to move all the people over here. You can see the whole, the whole uh, slide there. Okay. All right. So we're going to start. I don't. Oh, there we go. Oh, I think that just collapsed. I don't know. I can leave it there. All right. So we're going to first start with what to expect. Um, of course, Earth University is kind of two parts and you can do it a la carte or you can do it all together. Um, tonight we're doing our first Zoom class and it's gonna be a little bit different than the rest of them. Um, they'll be monthly uh, for about eight, eight months. We might have to do a ninth class um, depending on how, how we can fit everything in. Um, so tonight we're going to do our intros and questions in the first 30 minutes, and then the, the last hour will be more getting into the nitty gritty of the class material. And then usually what we'll do is um, the class material first, and then kind of the last 30 minutes will be more question and discussion and, and that kind of stuff. But, you know, don't hesitate if you've got a question that, that really pertains to something we're talking about and you you want to interrupt we're you know we're easy going about um kind of doing it that way you and, you, and you can always type it in the chat too that's true so whoever's Although, not talking can keep an eye on the chat when i'm the sharing chat. my screen can you see the chat because maybe, uh, maybe when i'm sharing my screen i don't know if i can see it i think i can see it okay yeah i can keep it up on my computer so uh a lot of y'all probably read the topics as you can see there's more than eight bullet points here. Um, we're going to try to get to the first. Well, we're going to definitely do the first two. And then we're going to kind of get into the third, probably. Um, we're not exactly sure how long it'll take tonight to, you know, to get into the material, but we're going to cover all this stuff and more. So, um, you know, if there's something you want to you want to learn about that's not on this list, you'll have a chance in a minute to um, voice that and we'll we're going to take notes and you know add anything that that we haven't thought of that y'all want to know about um, but we are going to cover you know lots of things about places to park and developing land and going off grid um, you know and developing land for uh, a single use and then multiple tiny house use all that kind of stuff i kind of put this all these things in order like um and i'm imagining that the things at the top of the list are more for diyers and entrepreneurs and then as you go down the list it's probably a little more for just entrepreneurs you know whether you want to be a tiny house builder or you want to um get into the real estate side of it or airbnb or something like that um it kind of uh, the, you know, we'll, we'll move more into the kind of entrepreneur only, but, you know, a lot of times DIYers find they love it and, and want to get a little more, you know, into the, the business side of things. So, right. And sometimes people want to get into the business side of it and decide not to. After yeah. They learn how <laughs> it goes both evolving. ways. <laughs> and, uh, and, and these aren't individual classes. These are some of these, some of these topics are going to take multiple classes, like the planning, designing, is actually pretty huge. There, 
I don't know if you, was it on the previous page? Did you list out? No, okay. it, it's coming. Yeah, so in the upcoming page, we'll, we'll show you all the different phases of, of planning, designing, and there's like a dozen of them. So it, that's a that's a, actually a pretty huge topic. Um, and then uh, prepping for the build phase. Yeah, it says prepping on the, on the previous slide. It's not like, you know, prepping or bugging out or anything. It's like, uh, <laughs> or, you know, these days it, it's preparing for your build, you know, so we, we're, we're going to, you know, talk to you about, you know, everything you need to do to get ready to build your house um, and, and what all it takes, you know, because we've, we've built over 30 tiny houses, you know, so we've got the experience and we started like a lot of DIYers do it. So, um, yeah, that's true. We're, do we want to get into what? Yeah, that next? works. We're, so those are the topics y'all, if y'all have something else that you want to add, um, we're going to do that during intros. So, um, so the Zoom classes are going to be more, um, you know, sit down classes, information, uh, discussing stuff. And then, of course, the hands on classes, that's where we're going to really get into the nitty gritty of the build, um, learning, you know, the, the, the folks that take the entire class, so they're doing everything, are going to get a, you know, a textbook, um, workbook, planning worksheets, uh, and then you'll get digital copies too so that you can um, use the spreadsheets that we've got for like budgeting we've got several spreadsheets that are you know for materials lists and budgeting and stuff like that so you're going to get everything everything you know if you're doing both the zoom and the hands-on <clears throat> you'll have um, lots of resources um, and and as we go we're going to cover every step of the building process kind of start to finish we won't be covering it in order just because the way, you know, whatever we have available to build on, we're just going to have to use our checklist and make sure we cover everything, but it'll, it might be out of order. Um, and then there'll be some things that are duplicated. So like you'll learn the, the tankless hot water heater and the standard hot water heater installation. You'll learn how to put up, you know, uh, different kinds of interior walls, different kinds of siding options and designs. Um, you know, we're, we're going to, there'll be some kind of overlap where, you know, window installation is just a step along the process. That's kind of a one, one time thing. Maybe there's a little bit of variation on that, but um, we'll also duplicate, you know, you'll learn about installing a regular flush toilet and then also we'll cover composting toilets and, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a pretty comprehensive um you know set of skills and and steps that we're going to cover in the hands-on anything else you want to say about the hands-on oh um, yeah just that we, we will you know like she said it's not necessarily going to be in order but we'll we'll at least touch on every different aspect and and then different you know when there's different types of of materials that we use and different that require different installation methods we'll be sure to cover um, those different aspects as well any questions? Okay, we'll keep going. All right, so um, we're going to introduce ourselves and then we're going to um, get a little, just a short intro from everybody in the class that's here tonight. Um, so we we talked a little bit about, you know, just we've been building tiny houses for four years. 2017 um, was when Peter decided he wanted to uh, give it a try and we bought our first tiny house trailer and uh, he built so he was still working well I guess I should back up so we've been in construction 2006 or five was when you started um, our construction company that uh, made it until the recession in 2009 <laughs> um, and then you know a lot of what Peter had been doing after that was um, home improvement, working for companies that did a lot of remodeling, home improvement kinds of products. And, um, and then also he did contracting work on the side. Um, my first, well, both of our first um, construction experience was at uh, Habitat for Humanity and um, a couple of other uh, Appalachia service project and some, you know, so, so as a teen and in my twenties, I did um, a lot more construction than I do now. Now I'm on the computer a lot more than um, that kind of stuff. But 
but I did work at Habitat for Humanity after college um, is at, on staff, um, which in Atlanta, which was the one of the biggest construction companies in Atlanta. It was I was surprised to learn they built 50 houses a year. And um, in comparison, we build about 10 houses a year. <laughs> um, so it's uh, kind of life has prepared us. Uh, interestingly, it kind of all has come together. And then we've had, he had, he had a tax business, a uh, tax preparation business. And so we've had, a, I've had a couple of micro small businesses that um, have kind of brought us here with all the experience and um, know how to kind of bring our construction experience and our business experience to, by the time we had finished the first tiny house. Um, we were ready to to go into business. March 2018 was when we really kind of incorporated the business and uh, started that. So you were, we're still working at Pella Windows and Doors, and the first build was just him and our son, who was at the time was 17, and they worked one day a week, and then they did uh, a week in the middle and a week at the end that was solid, um, but. And it took, what do we say, eight months? Well, six months except those weeks. So so that's how we modeled the uh, Earth University was we, we think it's going to be about eight months of building every other weekend. It's about the same number of build days as um, Peter and Houston did when we did our first 20 footer. Do you have anything you want to yeah, just, say um, about that? Yeah, uh, you get kind of Give a little bit, but you know, like Christina said, I have about 17 years of construction experience. You know, including you know, started out actually started out building storage sheds when we were dating. Uh, every time we went to Lowe's or Home Depot, I, she said I always had to go, and I didn't even realize I did this, but she said I'd always have to go and and look at the storage sheds out in the parking lot and check those out and stuff. And then a few years later, I started the uh, storage shed business. And that's kind of how I got into construction. You know, I had my only real construction experience prior to that was working Habitat for Humanity. And- um, But in the army, he was a telephone lineman. So like he knows a, a little bit about wiring and he's he's really good at and fixing for, plumbing yeah, too. I worked for Southwestern Bell for a number of years back in the nineties. Um, you know, wiring houses and things like that. So I was familiar with, you know, how, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in a lot of attics. So I knew, <laughs> how, knew how a lot of, a lot of the house houses were built and what all goes up in the attic. And, and I've always, and it's always kind of fascinated me. And so every time, you know, even if it's not something that I have experience with um, or had experience with, you know, every time there was an electrician or a plumber or carpenter or whatever was around, I'd always ask them what they're doing and why they're doing it. And so I just, over the years, just gained a lot of knowledge um, that because I was interested in it. And then, uh, you know, started after the, you know, shed company, uh, you know, after the recession in 2009, and we had to close down that shed company. I just went to work for a couple of company, couple of, of other companies um, over the years. Home improvement. Doing home improvement, uh, mostly in sales. And then also, but also did uh, general contracting on the side and got a lot of, and doing that, you know, I got to see a lot of what lasts for a long time, you know, because if, if people are calling us out there to um, look at their house to get repaired or remodeled um, and then actually doing the, you know, doing the work and being on site with all that, the, uh, you know, I got to see what lasts and what, what works you know, and what not years. to do, what, yeah. where the, how the water what damage gets last. in. Yeah. And, you know, you know, what, you know, one of my, one of the things that I was very proficient at was, you know, whenever there's a water leak, the, um, you know, even if there's a couple of contractors that had been there before me, I was able to find it and fix it that the other guys weren't able to do. So that was something that I got a lot of experience with, um, in learning how to keep water out. <laughs> so, you know, what, you know, which to me, that's like the biggest thing, <laughs> you know, in, in any house, tiny house or regular house, you know, is, is keeping the, keeping the rain out and then also preventing plumbing leaks and things like that. So, um, you know, that's, that's something that we teach in the, that we're going to teach a lot about in the um, in-person class as well. And then, you know, I found out about tiny houses about 
you know, sometime in 2017 and kind of became obsessed with them. And I was um, working as a general contractor at the time. And I had some, we had some friends who were flipping houses um, that I was their general contractor. And I said, you know, the market was really tight at that time. Like everybody and their dog who, who, who has the HGTV, uh, you know, was going out and trying Open to flip houses. houses because of all the TV shows. And there stuff. were no more houses to flip. So they right. decided to build a tiny house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. And, and, uh, you know, by the time we finished the first one, I was like, I love this. I want to do that. And I was, I was working full time, uh, for Pella and doing general contracting. And so I, I just did that first year we built in 2018, when we finished our first tiny house, we built two more in that year. And I did a couple other, um, contracting jobs. And then I think in 2019, we, I think we only did one bathroom remodel I think is all we did in 2019 and, and all the rest of the year was was uh was tiny houses and then you know 2020 and 21 22 we've just been doing tiny houses full time and uh you know we haven't uh business has been steady you know throughout the throughout COVID you know prices have been crazy and uh you know shortages and... let's not talk about that part <laughs> that's not all right. fun <laughs> all right we'll talk we'll get keep it light all right but uh <laughs> but yeah so basically we basically what we figured out was you know what um you know over the years we've seen dozens of tiny house businesses come and go and we kind of figured out what what kind of businesses were were lasting in this market um you know in the tiny house industry and what kind of businesses weren't and you know so we got so we learned you know how we want to you know honed in on, on how we wanted to model our business and, and make it um, successful and profitable. So, so we're, we're building tiny homes on wheels. We did, we did one on found, well, one on foundation and then one in 2009 on foundation with, you know, with the old construction company, that was a tiny house on a backyard, but um, we've been focusing on wheels. A lot of what you'll learn in our class, some of it, can apply to tiny homes on foundation. Um, we use a lot of the construction practices that are um, usually they're kind of beefed up what you would find in a standard home on foundation. You know, we're, our framing is, is more sturdy because it's got to drive down the road and stuff like that. But we mostly use pretty much, except for we don't use sheetrock because um, it's too heavy, but pretty and much- cracks. Yeah, and pretty much everything you'll see in our homes, you'll you you could also put on a foundation home. So yeah. So we want to hear from the people in the audience. Yeah. I was Should gonna we call just on look. We can go in. Um oh we didn't do our goals and intentions for the course. Do you want to oh. do that first? Sure. Um sorry, we'll do that first and then we'll do um so when we started the business, we had all these great ideas. We're like, we're going to have a DIY maker space and we're going to build a tiny house village and we're going to, you know, all these things. Right. And Which still, we still want to do. Most yes. Of I mean, <laughs> the coming up with the capital for all the land and and all the RV hookups is, is a big hurdle. Um, and so we do still want to do those. But our DIY maker space intentions have morphed over the years. Um, because for, for one reason, um, is that the public is in general, there's a lack of education just about construction. And we knew that if we opened up a DIY makerspace, we'd spend all our time trying to teach these people how to swing a hammer and, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. It's, we've, we've done some other workshops, um, just like a single day installing a hot water heater or, you know, Air single, yeah, single kind of one-off workshops. And we were really surprised at the lack of skills out there. You know, everybody's got computer skills these days, but a lot of people don't have, you know, the kind of hands-on skills that, um, you know, and there's, we have a new economy um, now we've got, you know, and even before uh, COVID, when we started the business, we knew that the world is, we want the world to move to a more collaborative, um, less hierarchical um, kind of situation. And, and that means that, it, and uh, 
education is moving in that way, you know, so apprenticeships are coming back. Um, you know, we're seeing that the ways that we have not educated um, our kids and our, our society and, um, you know, a lot of skills that are really valuable, but maybe they weren't valued by the society so much. And so, um, you know, we kind of moved our focus away from the DIY makerspace where people come and independently, you know, build their tiny house to, um, you know, we have some skills to share that, you know, a lot of people are, are needing in this kind of new, um, where the world is moving, we'll just put it that way. And, and there's a, also a lot of education that just needs to happen. Um, there are a lot of misconceptions about tiny homes. There are a lot of misconceptions. Um, and what, what it takes to build a tiny home. Well, yeah. So, you know, that's kind of a big picture of, of our intention for, for doing this course. Um, and then also, you know, so that's the wider, the wider society, but then also, you know, we've, we've always have felt like building community is like one of our number one things, no, no matter what we're doing. Um, and the tiny house community, you know, there's, there's resources out there. There's a lot more resources out there than there were four years ago five years ago, but um, you can always have more and especially local, you know, when people can actually come instead of doing, you know, the online classes are great, but being able to come and actually, you know, get your hands dirty and, and be with other people who are uh, tiny house enthusiasts is a really valuable, valuable thing. So we want to provide that uh, for all of us, for the community. Anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, about the community support is you know, we've also done work with local um, communities or local charities that, uh, you know, are trying to help people with tiny houses as well, um, like Operation Tiny House, which is not to be confused with Operation Tiny Home, which is a national. Um, we have a local one called Operation Tiny House, where they're, where they're trying to get tiny homes for um, homeless veterans. And it's been years in the making, but um, I think they're they're getting closer. Uh, they but there's a lot of legal hurdles that they have to get over to, even even just provide that service. So, yeah. um, well, we built a tiny house for them a couple of years ago. Um, we get a lot of calls from charities that want tiny houses built, and then also DIYers that are stuck somewhere in their process and they want help, you know? And so, and, in, in you know, as we were, as we've been building our business and figuring this out, it's been hard to help those folks because we were just, you know, trying to get our houses built and get our windows in on time. And, you know, and so we, for a long time, we've had to say no, um, you know, we just can't, we don't have space or we don't have the bandwidth to um, help DIYers as much in that way. We've, we've had, we've helped a few and, learned from the, you know, those situations. And, um, but we get calls, we were surprised at how many calls we've gotten from DIYers who are stuck at some point in the process and, you know, they're asking for our help. And so the, this course is kind of the answer to that, to try to help as many people as possible and, and do it in a way that's sustainable just for our energy and all the things that, you know, we're trying to build all these tiny houses and pay the rent and, stay in business during COVID and all of that. So, so we're hoping that this course is gonna be a way that people can come and learn and um, get that support and then, you know, build community too. Anything else? That's good. All right.